Ooh. Oh yeah. Check it out. Welcome back to finally another episode on Project Thor. Uh, it's been a while. And in this episode, we finally gonna attack the extra problem again. Uh, thank you so much for all the comments you put under the other video. That helped us a lot and we figured out that there was three problems uh, with the way we did it the last time. One part of the problem is that the pinion gear from the rear axle and the pinion gear from the front axle are slightly two different lengths. Uh, this one from the rear axle is actually a little bit longer and of course we had them mixed up so that was one part of the problem. The second part was the bearings of the pinion and ring gear um, are pretty hard to install when you don't have a hydraulic press or special tools which we don't have. So we came up with an idea and with a way to improvise the same result with this uh, 50 year old wagon chassis, um, our crane and an hydraulic jack which we will show you in a minute. For the third part of the problem it's actually, there's actually a special tool for compressing the housing of the axle to fit the ring gear in there. And since we don't have that either, um, we improvised here as well. And we're now going to show you how we did that. Enjoy! It does fit. All right, we just set up our makeshift press. Uh, we have this hydraulic jack here on a couple of bricks. And this lift will push up the pinion gear into the bearing, which will which sit up here. And we have the bearing compressed with a piece of pipe against this old wagon chassis, which weighs about a metric ton. And we did it already with the other one, so we know it works. And we will show you now how we do it. All right, the pinion gear is installed, sits very well. Now onto the second part, installing the ring gear. And like I said in the beginning, there's a special tool cool to compress the housing. We don't have that, so it's the exact same uh, lift that will push up and compress the housing, hopefully, and so we can install the ring gear. We have reached the end of September and there oh, September. We have reached the end of August and so unfortunately the end of this video as you can see we put in the rear door over here and as you can also see we are not going to reuse the windows. This is going to become a little bit of a panel wagon so to speak. Uh, the idea is that our kitchen is going to be back here and that the panel from the inside is going to serve as a little bit of a, a shelf and we can organize things there. And the side panels here are going to be hinged so that we can flip them open and they're going to have little latches that you can lock uh, right here. So this is going to flip open and then over here hopefully we're going to have, um, we're going to use that space 
uh, between the, the trunk and this outside panel to store probably all of our kitchen stuff on this side and all of our tools and recovery gear on the other side. So just making uh, some good use of the space back here. Uh, you can actually purchase these from Front Runner, but they're kind of expensive. So we decided to make our own. Obviously they don't fit quite yet, but uh, so we're, they're held in by duct tape, but this is something to do for next month. Um, other than that, there's been uh, a lot of uh, not so exciting work this month. I did a lot of parts cleaning. I did a lot of parts reconditioning, parts spray painting, parts organizing. And uh, I didn't shoot a whole lot of that because really it's not that exciting, but it's very time consuming. And it is unfortunately part of, you know, seeing a, a process or a, a restoration like this through. So that's why this video does not hold a whole lot of exciting content. What is exciting though, is that we seem to have finally gotten, uh, gotten around um, to solve our axle problem. And before we bolt those up though, and fill them with oil and, and put them underneath the chassis again, to kind of get back to where we thought we were three months ago. Uh, the ultimate test of whether we assembled them correctly is gonna be an ink test. So we're gonna um, um, put some ink on all the teeth of the ring gear, then turn it once, and then we'll see how the teeth of the ring gear connect with the teeth of the pinion gear to make sure there's proper connection and there's not gonna be any excess wear. That's sort of what the Mercedes manual um, suggests doing. Uh, again, we're, uh, we're a little bit limited as to how much we were able to follow the Mercedes manual. It called for all kinds of specialty tools. So we're hoping that with our sort of improvised method, we were able to ultimately achieve the same result. And you're going to learn whether that worked or not, hopefully in the next video with this ink test. And yeah, that's it for now. We're also working on part three of our special history series so uh, stay tuned for that thank you guys so much for watching thank you for your support again leave a comment down below um, we really love reading those answering those and it really helps us along with the algorithm if you like our series here feel free to share them with a friend we could use some more views and um, i'll see you guys for the next one thank you